Welcome to the Dome Dog Podcast. I'm your host, Matt DeBritt. Syracuse falls to St. John's tonight in overtime at the Barclays Center, 76-69. Now, before this tournament started, I said we're going to learn a lot about this team in these two games. Could go 0-2, 1-1, or 2-0. Very close to going 2-0, but just couldn't get over the hump against St. John's. Why? Uh, St. John's pressure defense just kind of got to Syracuse and a few other things. Joseph Girard, not a great game tonight. Four points. He had 31 points last night, and Syracuse needed every bit of it to get that one against Richmond. So it's pretty obvious to me the team goes how Girard goes at this point. I know it's a short season so far, five games, but in two games he's played bad, the Colgate and the game tonight, they lose. Jesse Edwards, got to be on the floor. And I've said this a million times, and I'll say it a million more times as long as he's on the team. He has to stay out of foul trouble. He has to understand to go up straight watching me on YouTube, not Superman. And if go Superman, the refs are going to call that. And that's what they did. He got into foul trouble in the first half and the second half. He still had a strong game, 18 points, but he scored most of those points towards the end of the game. And he was perfect from the foul line. That's an improvement. Uh, the best case scenario, he has to be on the court most of the game. I know Hema came in and Hema was great bringing the energy with seven blocks, eight rebounds, but four points. Difference in four points and 18 points. And Edwards barely played. So, obviously, Edwards is a much superior offensive player than Hema is. I've said that before. That's not news. But Edwards has to stay on the floor, okay? Um, Judah Mintz, we know he's an athlete. He's got fire. Uh, he can drive to the basket. He needs to figure out how to distribute the ball a little more. St. John's pressured him in the second half, and he couldn't do much. And it's also because no one else on the floor was doing anything either. Benny Williams, good game from him overall, I thought. Uh, I mentioned before he kind of hesitated a lot in shooting, or he's more in his head. Tonight, there was no hesitation. Once he got the ball and he was open, bam, shot. He hit a three, hit a couple corner jumpers, or not corner jumpers, but foul line jumpers. And he was going after rebounds, 11 rebounds, double-double, career high in rebounds. So that's a positive. Hopefully he can build on that and keep going. Uh, Chris Bell in this tournament played well. You know, did his job. He shot maybe a little too much tonight. I mean, he went five for 12. It wasn't horrible, but he was two for seven from three. So if Syracuse is going to have him in there at – more crucial times, maybe he has to figure out how to get a drive going to go along with that nice jump shot he's got and also pretty pure outside shot. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. I already mentioned Hema from the bench. Colpin came in for a little while. He did affect the game, I thought, at times. I wish to see him a little bit more when Gerard's struggling because if Gerard's not making threes or making shots, you know, it'll be tougher for Syracuse to have him in there because – that's what they need him for, to score. And if he's not scoring, guys like on St. John's that are faster guards or pressuring, he's having a hard time. He, Gerard, just looked, Gerard just looked really gassed tonight. I think he was just done. And I think Bayham has to recognize that. I know his next option is probably not as good, but might as well try it because Gerard wasn't giving you much of anything. Uh, Justin Taylor didn't see the floor. I was kind of surprised after he was the first guy off the bench last night. Brown didn't see the floor. Uh, also surprised in this kind of helter skelter push them around game i think brown and taylor could have come in even for a little while to just throw their weight around <laughs> but no we're not seeing that and you know the zone defense was the whole time and they were in the game so it's okay but you know when syracuse couldn't score in the second half for about eight nine ten minutes seemed like seemed like forever they couldn't score when Jesse Edwards went out of the game while he was in foul trouble. And I think at that point you have to go to a press or you have to go to uh trapping guy, bringing ball up the court just to generate some offense because they had nothing. And really that's kind of how the game was lost. Syracuse was leading at halftime. They were leading up to that point. And then St. John's just made a run there. And I wouldn't say they never looked back because the game went to overtime, but it seemed like St. John's was in control most of that part of the second half. So we did learn that Syracuse can take a punch. They're going to play zone defense. Uh, rotations shortened. That's not a surprise. We saw some stepping up from 
from Bell and, and Williams. Hope to see more from Copeland and Brown or someone else off the bench or even Torrance going forward. All right, that's all I have for the Dome Dot Podcast tonight. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Travel safe.